text one of you Juma heads to try and smuggle a blaster, or so help me, any sort of military-grade frag weapons into my facility is gonna take a long walk out the airlock. So if I catch any of you with anything other than sonic charges or mining lasers, I'll burn you and your contract. So I just beat KOTOR 2, and I thought it was pretty good. KOTOR 2, short for Knights of the Old Republic 2, the Sith Lords, takes place thousands of years before the events of the Star Wars films that we know and love. This is in the Old Republic timeline. KOTOR 2 in particular is a character-driven story-focused RPG with tons of great dialogue and a decent party combat system at that. If you're not familiar with the Old Republic universe, the timeline, the KOTOR games are a great place to start because it's in the name, Knights of the Old Republic. All you need to know is that there are more Sith Lords running around. There's not just one brooding in the dark with a shadowy cloak on. There are also foot soldiers similar to the Galactic Empire. So you have the Sith army, you have Sith battleships. It's kind of a weird thing to take in, but you do get used to it fairly quickly. Every game has to have a armada of evil bad guys. Despite being thousands of years before what many of us are used to with Star Wars, the Old Republic has a lot of familiar and newer additions to its universe that might only be briefly mentioned in newer Star Wars timeline media. KOTOR 2 has you playing a different character than the previous game, with almost all new companions, save for one, and it's not even that important. In short, you don't have to play KOTOR 1 to play KOTOR 2. And I did just that. I played through part of 1 before going back to 2 again and realizing KOTOR 2 is just a more interesting game. It's easier to get into, and I just was engrossed by it a lot more than KOTOR 1 which is developed by Bioware, KOTOR 2 is developed by Obsidian. And KOTOR 1, the Bioware game, is what you'd expect as far as a conventional video game story goes. But it is worth checking out. The reason why I picked KOTOR 2 also is because there's a ton of quality of life improvements that have been added to the game over time. Recently, a Steam patch added workshop support, so you can actually mod the game a lot easier. And it also supports modern systems and display, so you can even play it at 4K with a controller if you if you want to do something crazy like that. 4K is fine, but the the controller I don't. <laughs> Whatever. This also makes it easier to install the restored content mod for the game with the modding capability. Why is all this really important? Well, if you compare vanilla Kotor 1 to Kotor 2, Kotor 2 has the benefit of you know the stronger writing, as I've mentioned, but. The biggest problem with KOTOR 2 is the bugs. It's really, really bad. Within the first two or so hours of the game, I probably had to save and reload my save, quick save and quick load, about 20 or 30 times, because after every fight, my character would lock up. This improves later on in the game as you get party members, and you can just switch between them to bypass the bug, but this is a real problem on newer operating systems, and... Even on older ones, there's these things that remain, such as like the weird twitches and animations. Sometimes characters are just standing around, they're not talking, or when they are talking, the uh, sometimes the lips go out of sync. It's a little bit weird, like... I'm not even talking about like a standard mouth animation, I'm talking about like their lips are moving and they're not even talking. And sometimes animations would trigger, like in these weird cutscenes, but the characters would be out of sync, or they would be going a little bit faster than they should, or... Just things aren't lining up correctly. It might be a new operating system thing, I don't know. This game was rushed to market. Obviously there are lots of bugs, but the cut content is a big killer because there was all this stuff that they were planning for the game to contextualize everything, to make it more cohesive. There's all kinds of scripts and even voice acting in the game files. So modders, what they've done is restore most of it, not all, but most of it. It was rushed to market like other Insidian games like Fallout New Vegas, but it's... It's not that bad. If you play it with the Sith Lords Restored Content mod, and you play with the new updates, KOTOR 2 is a lot more stable, a lot better as a game, as an overall package, but there are just some moments where you feel like the game is just going to break, like the ground underneath it is just going to shatter. Now, in terms of the game itself, the characters are really interesting. The choices that you make aren't just super nice or super evil, dark and light side like the previous game, KOTOR 1, you can walk a more gray line. I personally like to play the intimidation part. If I got sick of being an errand boy for people, I would just intimidate them to let me progress, like I'd threaten to kill them or, I don't know, do something, or threaten to extort them. 
but I would help people if it wasn't out of the way. Doing this influences your companions and allows you to understand and explore their stories, get more information out of them, learn more about the universe, about them. So it's kind of similar to Mass Effect 2 in a little bit uh, of a way, another Bioware game, but this one honestly does it better. Statement. HK-47 is ready to serve, Master. Statement. Oh, I am aware of that, Master. I simply use it to give you the illusion of control and obedience. Humans often need such comforts until the end comes. Statement. Of course I do, Master. Until the end. Statement. Ah, more questions. Wonderful. Answer. Many organic meat bags find that question difficult to answer, Master. But I believe I can provide you with a satisfactory definition. Definition. Love is making a shot to the knees of a target 120 kilometers away using an Aerotech sniper rifle with a tri-light scope. Statement. This definition, I am told, is subject to interpretation. Obviously, love is a matter of odds. Not many meatbags could make such a shot. In short, if a light side character sees you doing something kind of fucked up, they might scold you, but they will be slowly influenced to the dark side at the same time. There's also an extremely well done story underneath here, like it's really, really good. There's obviously some kind of plot going on with another character, and the game builds it up very well at the end. There's kind of like a two-way plot going on here. You think it's gonna go one way, and then it twists, and then it twists again. It's really interesting. If I had to note two of my biggest complaints with the game, aside from the bugs, it would have to be the last level and the combat. Without getting into spoilers, there's a near flawless buildups in terms of storytelling, as I've mentioned, but some of the key points are kind of buried in loading screens, especially in the final level. The problem is that on a new PC, loading screens are almost non-existent, so you can't read some of the critical information, which kind of sucks. The game also hints at a party romance function, you know, kind of like how you can uh, <clears throat> have relations with your party members if you select the right dialogue options. This was a thing in KOTOR 1, like it was actually like a Mass Effect style romance system, but it kind of fizzles out into a bit of a disappointment here, like it's not as well developed. Sometimes you can get fairly far with some characters and you can do interesting things, but sometimes it's completely out of left field, like characters I only talk to a little bit are confessing feelings for me at the end of the game. It's like, woman, I don't even know you, why are you telling me you want to bang me? But going back to the big issue, the last level of this game is contextually interesting, but it generally sucks to play. You play solo most of the level, which is contextually interesting because like, oh, you gotta go there, it's a showdown, whatever. Throughout the game, and here especially, the game will switch you to another companion you have to play as. And that's, again, by themselves, which is very frustrating because... If you get locked into a companion you're not good with, and they don't have a lot of health packs or items... You're kind of screwed, you have to reload previous saves. I never had to do that because I always had lots of health packs and I can just whittle any enemy down, but it was still a pain. Playing as your main character isn't much better either. Whenever I hear about a game being rushed to market, good or bad, the last level is where things really start to shit the bed, and KOTOR 2 does that hard. Corridor after corridor after corridor of elite enemies that can kill you within seconds if you don't set up and pull correctly. It's one of the most frustrating final levels I've ever played in a while. It's a party-based game, but for the last two hours of play, you don't have a party, and you just get completely annihilated if you're not so damn careful. I'm constantly hammering the quick save key, and then the quick load key, and then the quick save key, making sure that every inch I take, I don't have to repeat a hundred times again and again. It's so damn frustrating. The game also ends on a bit of a cliffhanger story-wise. If you've been playing since KOTOR 1, and then you kind of expect it to go further in KOTOR 2, you're not really gonna get it here. You're gonna get something a bit disappointing, because there was originally a third game plan, but it never came out, and this game ends on a cliffhanger in that regard. But if you're just talking about how the game wraps itself up, it's got a very satisfying ending, if not a little bit confusing at first, because again, the, the, the freaking information about it is locked in the loading screen, so 
it can be easy to miss some things. These games have been considered non-canon forever. There's an MMO, but a lot of people who like KOTOR 2 absolutely despise it, saying it's terrible fan fiction at best, and it retcons a lot of the stuff KOTOR 2 did anyway. And this was before Disney destroyed the Star Wars universe, so... If you're expecting a complete, satisfying duology of games with a story that's well-explained, uh, you're not going to get that three-parter that's going to really wrap everything up, unfortunately. But you are going to get a great start-to-finish fun game that's self-contained for the most part. There's also the combat. The combat isn't bad, but it's not worth being stretched to over 30 hours. There's some cool force powers you can use. You can train your companions to be Jedi. Getting a lightsaber feels really rewarding for the first time. The animations for the fights are well choreographed and fun to watch. There's a good amount of loot to the game, so it's interesting to get upgrades. But micromanaging your party members becomes a bit of a chore, constantly equipping different armor and tweaking stats. If you like that sort of thing, then KOTOR 2 is probably going to be like a dream game for you. But if you're going to go that far, you should play on the harder difficulty. I barely micromanaged and I still got by fairly well on normal with the occasional difficulty spike with bosses. But the combat starts to get really repetitive at the halfway mark and it really gets frustrating at the end of the game. Overall, Knights of the Old Republic 2 The Sith Lords is like Obsidian's other games. Flawed, but really, really good. It's a lot better thanks to mods and official updates and it's definitely worth playing from your backlog. I'm probably not going to play it a second time, even though there's a lot I've missed, because frankly the combat just got so repetitive by the end, and I do not ever want to do that final level ever, ever again. But until next time, I'll see you guys later. I'm going to check out some more RPGs from this era. I might actually play Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines before the new game comes out, so expect a video on that if I have time to do one. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm out.